guest now is Michael Brooks, host of The Michael Brooks Show, joining us from Los Angeles. Thanks for being with us, Michael. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. So you have, of course, been a very enthusiastic supporter of Bernie Sanders. Give us a breakdown on what your guy Bernie Sanders proposes over Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren, candidates who some people say are progressive as well. He proposes to give everybody in the United States full comprehensive health care. Nobody else supports that. He proposes to get rid of all student debt, which is a very major issue. It's kind of crippling in the economy of the United States. He proposes a really global and comprehensive approach to ecology and the Green New Deal, which really in the spirit of your show actually has a very comprehensive section on wealth and technology transfer built into it. There is definitely some understanding of internationalism in his campaign. That's why he voted against Iran sanctions, the only member, Democratic member of the Senate to do that, Democratic caucus calling for freeing President Lula. And Joe Biden is, by any kind of international standard, a quite right-wing figure. Uh, he's helped sort of construct the prison industrial complex in the United States, major proponent of the invasion of Iraq and also somebody who more kind of narrowly but significantly has always called for cutting Social Security and Medicare. Elizabeth Warren is in no man's land in this campaign. I mean, she was never to the left and never a movement candidate like Sanders ever. That was always spin, uh, not reality. Uh, she has a pretty narrow set of interests and narrow set of issues. She's not somebody who has a track record on anything to do with foreign policy, military policy. Uh, that's, well, certainly not positive and not much kind of interest in things like health care. Uh, and as the campaign has worn on, and she's kind of chosen to sort of just relentlessly attack Bernie Sanders, uh, her positioning, you know, falls further and further to the right. Okay, so what about these Trump tweets we're seeing on Bernie? Just yesterday he tweeted, they're staging a coup against Bernie, of course referring to the mainstream Democrats. He says that they're working hard to destroy the name and reputation of crazy Bernie Sanders and take the nomination away from him. Is he right and what's his strategy with these tweets? Well, I mean, Trump is just messy and he's ridiculous and he likes to cause drama. Uh, and I think he, ha he does have an instinct of people's generalized disgust with the establishment, for lack of a better word. Now, coup, I, don't, I wouldn't use that word coup yet. If you go to a convention where Bernie Sanders has the most votes and most delegates and they steal it from him, then I have no problem using that word, even though it might not technically be correct because of the convention rules and, you know, people can get very kind of, uh, you know, focused on language. But I think, obviously, it would be totally undemocratic. Right now, though, the Democratic establishment is all aligned against Bernie. They are running a totally vicious campaign against him. Most of cable news, particularly MSNBC, uh, functions as basically almost like an anti-Bernie super PAC. So he sees hay to make. Uh, it's about depressing the turnout. It's about increasing divisions of those who oppose him. And the Democratic Party, as it has been for so long, is Donald Trump's greatest strategic ally. Okay, so speaking of cable news, yesterday Marianne Williamson, who was actually a candidate herself, tweeted that she was bumped off CNN after just a couple of minutes because Pete came on to endorse, of course, right-wing candidate Joe Biden. Let's talk about the role of the mainstream media in what is supposed to be, of course, a democratic process. What was Chris Matthews' role up until last night, Rachel Maddow's and so forth? If Americans saw, U.S. Americans saw this sort of behavior where the party or government establishment are so closely intertwined with the country's media, they would, of course, say that that's a sign that there exists no real liberty or democracy in the country. What tells about the mainstream media? We are in a really degraded democracy in the United States, and people have been saying that for decades, you know, and I think you saw... In 2016, the Republican Party and Donald Trump really formally own themselves as an authoritarian political project. The Republican Party is an, an anti-liberal party in the sense that they are not a party of rules, governance, and rights. And now you're seeing in this cycle the Democratic establishment for, you know, in a different way and their media allies they are far more worried about Bernie Sanders than Donald Trump getting reelected. And you do see that in terms of relationships and, uh, and bias, right? Like, I think you don't need to kind of like go to some grand conspiracy theory to see that 
one, all of these networks are corporate owned, and that's antithetical to Bernie's agenda. Two, they're staffed by people who all sort of know each other and represent an incredibly thin slice of the population. They're not interested in learning about what's really driving a lot of the electorate in terms of like this broad crisis we're in with regards to inequality, with regards to healthcare, with regards to human immiseration. And they also, you know, don't like Bernie personally. They don't like what he represents. He's not a careerist in the same way. He's not someone who has paid his respect to all of the things that they think one must respect in our society, in our politics. So it's self-interest, it's personal, and it's ideology. The establishment war on candidate Bernie Sanders, but there's also a lot of people who refuse to excuse Bernie's remarks on what many of us to believe to be the real democracies and the real socialism of the global south. Sanders has a soft imperialist progressive, is a soft imperialist progressive at best, a lot of people say. What is your response to that? I think we've got to be really careful about what we actually mean by that, right? So I think one is there is legitimate differences that people can litigate about how we think about the nature of Chinese governance as an example. And I think there's legitimate disagreements on that, and it would be you know, wrong to not acknowledge that. Then there's times where I, I, I personally disagree with a, a line that Sanders takes on certain issues, uh, although... Even when he's saying something, like even when he's giving more credence to uh, talking points on Venezuela, as an example, this is still a candidate who is running for president of the United States and can win who opposes the coup there. So I do think that there needs to be some calibration that people have between what people can say with media platforms and what people can say in certain very specific contexts versus somebody who is trying to. So you've made an appeal to your social media following to do everything you can to go out and vote, door knock, call and text. What are U.S. Americans going to do when we find out that once again a U.S. electoral process is rigged and that Bernie and his supporters got the shit end of the stick? Well, I don't know what's you know what that's going to mean, right? Like I think again we need to be really clear. If they go into a convention and he has the most votes, the most delegates then, and they don't give it to him, then yes, that's a whole other escalation. What might happen today, and it would be a tragedy for this country and the globe, would be if, you know, this fear-mongering, this coalescing around the right wing of the party knocked this movement back. And then the answer is, I don't know, right? Like, I, I think we cannot retreat to sort of like revolutionary fantasies that don't have a context yet inside the U.S. political system. But I also think that it would be start to answer some really serious questions we've been asking. People have been saying that for all of the flaws and all of the limits of, first of all, the Democratic Party, obviously, and the broader uh, U.S. electoral system, that there was this opening with Bernie, and there is this opening with Bernie. If that's shut, we're going to need to have a major strategic rethink. And I think this is hitting a lot of left-wing projects across the globe. You know, even someone like a President Lula, who succeeded and did so much and was conciliatory to the extent that he was willing to make alliances and compromises with the forces of capital, he still falls victim of a coup. I just think that, we, that it will require a very big rethink, but I think we're not there yet. And I actually think that the momentum is still on Sanders' side to win very major states, and we should recognize that it's not just us. We're, you know, freaked out because we're used to being on the receiving end, but they are in a serious panic, and they are throwing a Hail Mary pass, and I think it's too late for them. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We've been speaking to Michael Brooks from Los Angeles, in Los Angeles right now, host of The Michael Brooks Show. Thanks a million.